What's up, party people? If you're wondering why, when the inflation numbers come out, they don't reflect uh, what you see in your daily life, uh, it's because they use some really weird calculations, uh, all with the purpose of lowering that number for a bunch of different reasons, um, all to benefit the government and not you. So I happened to get some insider information. Uh, Jerome Powell was on the phone with the uh, Bureau of Labor, Stati Labor Statistics, who calculates the CPI, or the inflation numbers. And I have that recording here for you guys. So take a listen. My name's Eric. This is above my pay grade. Let's listen. Hey guys, it's me, Jerome. How are you? How are the kids? Good, good, good. Listen, um, got a bit of a problem here. Uh, inflation. You guys able to work those numbers a little bit? I uh, <laughs> printed a whole bunch of money. Like, lots. Way too much. So you know how we used to measure inflation by a cost of goods index? And if the cost of the goods went up one year, the difference in the next year would be our inflation rate. I've got a great idea. How about cost of living index? What is that, you may ask? Great question. Now, keep this between us. But uh, for the cost of living index, what we'll do, let's say somebody used to buy juicy fillets, and they were $10 a pound. And now, what's $10 a pound is chuck steak that's tough as woodpecker lips. Well, it's still steak, and therefore, the person can buy steak for $10 a pound. Ergo, ipsos facto, no inflation. <laughs> Look, we got to keep this number low. We have to increase Social Security every single time inflation goes up. So we can't tell the truth, if you know what I'm saying. we got to cook the books. On top of that, I have Alexandria Occasional Cortex calling me every day to print $2 trillion for college students. And she thinks this will lower inflation. She's crazy. And uh, you know how we promised all those senior citizens Social Security? We won't have to pay them more money if inflation is low. <laughs> know what I'm saying? Low, get with the program. Yeah. Oh, and one other thing. I read in the New York Times that the average person spends 1% to 2% of their income on housing. In addition, 0.2% um, to 0.5% on fuel. <laughs> so we'll make sure to weight those accordingly in the CPI data. We wouldn't want to overweight the things people don't use. <laughs> oh, put food in there as well. Yeah, because I'm trying to do a little what I call CYA, <laughs> cover your you-know-what, I printed a whole bunch, and I'm talking loads of money <laughs> last year. And uh, my friends got some, and I got some, everyone got some, but uh, <laughs> some people are really ticked. And um, we really need to fudge those numbers. Thanks. And over the next couple Fed meetings, what I'll do is pretend that we're going to raise rates. I'll talk really sternly like this. We're going to raise rates. And everyone will believe me, but we won't because we're in so much debt. You see what I'm saying here? We've got a problem, and I need you to fudge those numbers. Okay, glad we're on the same page. But one more thing before I let you go. Um, did I tell you about my weekend in Vegas? Oh, yeah. I got a tongue ring. Check this out. <laughs> Man, I am a rebel. Anyways, you keep fudging those inflation numbers, and I'll keep pretending we're going to raise rates, all right? All right, talk to you soon. Later.